Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kook Cinema Reviews. My name is Kyle. I'm Haley. I'm Ethan. And today we're going to be filling out our predictions for the 2024 Academy Awards. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so first category. Uh, let's talk about Best Actor in a Leading Role. The obvious Oscar favorite is Killian Murphy Oppenheimer. But I have to say that my personal, like, quiet favorite, I think, is Paul Giamatti's performance in The Holdovers. It was just a very slow, like, subtle build throughout the entire film, which I just kind of personally loved. But obviously, Oppenheimer is, like, the big one for the Academy. Yeah, I mean, it's been a tough race between Giamatti and Murphy. I do think, however, with Killian Murphy winning the uh, SAG Award, I think he's going to be the one who ends up taking it. I, those are definitely my two pa favorite performances. Uh, and, you know, Giamatti was creeping up there, but I think I'm going to lock in Killian Murphy myself. Yeah. yeah, I think Paul Giamatti was amazing in the role, but I think Killian Murphy's just like the just more obvious choice. It's yeah. the one by you picked. Uh, how about we shift over to the other side of the aisle, actress in the leading role. Ethan, Ooh, where do you see more. this? My personal thing is Lily Gladstone. I think that's just a good choice. It's for me, she was the best one. I know some people are saying Emma Stone. I think she was good in poor things, but I think really Gladstone, she, even though she wasn't the main focus of the movie, she kind of was at the same time, and she was just a good actress, you know? I've heard the same thing about Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone being the top two. I feel like Emma Stone's performance in Poor Things was more like she had to be able to build the character over time, but I feel like Lily Gladstone, you had to be able to give like a really strong performance through, like consistently throughout the entire movie and like be that strong force kind of pushing it through. And I feel like to be able to do that throughout the entire film is like what makes her such a great actress. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's close for me as well between those two. Um, I do think I am gonna be going with Lily Gladstone, however. Lily Gladstone is the more subtle performance, which I really like uh, as like as a winning performance. I think Lily Gladstone is gonna end up clutching it. Okay, let's go ahead and, why don't we just blast through the other two acting uh, right. categories. Okay. Let's blast it. Actor in a supporting role and actress in a supporting role. Where do you guys uh, see this going? I, I I think it's, me personally, I think it's pretty clear who's winning in each of these categories. Who would that be? Uh, Ryan Gosling, yes, I agree. No. I think he missed Ken. It was just uh, fantastic, you know? <laughs> um, I'm, I mean, I think Ryan Gosling was good. I think all of the supporting actor nominations are great. Uh, however, the one I'm gonna go with, and is also my personal pick, is Robert Downey Jr. He's been yeah. sweeping all of the awards. There's no doubt that this is going to anyone else in my mind. It has to be Robert Downey Jr. Like, that's just the one that I have my money on. I feel like it's well-deserved, and also just, like, throughout the entire performance that he gave, like, he had to be able to be, like, a foe, but also, like, relatable and, like, understandable throughout the entire movie. And so, like, props to that. Like, Ryan Gosling, like, same thing, I guess. Like, he had to be the foe. But it's not the same. Like, Robert Downey Jr.'s performance was just, like, on another level. And then, what were we talking about? Actress? For me, it's Divine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers. Yeah, it has yeah. to be her. It was a wonderful performance for me. Yeah, I, I agree. Divine Joy Randolph has got it locked up, and deservedly so, oh, in my mind. She just brought like such a, like, a warm energy to the movie, and I feel like without her, the movie wouldn't have been what it was. Without her, the film would be inconceivably worse, in my mind. How about we move to animated feature film? This is an interesting one. Ethan, what are your thoughts? I gotta go... The Boy and the Heron. The Boy and the Heron. I think, yeah. I think it's either between Across the Spider-Verse or Boy, the Boy and the Heron, but I think just The Boy and the Heron got it, I think. Mm -hmm. It's Miyazaki, and I feel like the Oscars just like that. It's interesting because at the beginning of the year, I really thought it would be uh, a lock for Spider-Verse. Um, but we've been seeing The Boy and the Heron win more awards and keep this competitive, so I think I'm actually also gonna go with The Boy and the Heron, go with the upset. Okay, I'm gonna start an argument then. I'll play. I want Elemental. <laughs> you're good, you're good. <laughs> elemental it is! No, um, okay, Across the Spider-Verse, I think it was a technical masterpiece. <laughs> like, watching it, like, clip like, clip, clip like with the breaking down and then with Thing, but the punk character that took like yeah, three years, yeah, yeah, for him to have to like the, um, for them to create him like over all those years for like all the individual shots, like that's so impressive, like technically. And I understand that like the boy in the hair, I I love Miyazaki like 100, 
but just for me, like, watching Spider-Verse was, like, a completely, like, it was a very immersive experience, like, for animation. Yeah, and I, like, I personally, I prefer Spider-Verse uh, to The Boy and the Heron, and it's close. It's very close for me, but I think Boy and the Heron is going to end up taking yeah. the award, which I'm honestly happy with either of these. I'm good with either. They yeah. both deserve it. They're both great. What about best cinematography? I'm between Killers of Flower Moon and Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. I think... Both were just really well made. I think Alma um, had, had a lot of good shots. And I think if we had, if uh, getting into directing, I'd say Christopher Nolan, he knows how to use a movie theater and how to like mo use this a screen. But I have to lean to Killers of the Flower Moon. I just think those shots in it, I think just were better, I'd say. I think Oppenheimer was one of Nolan's best, like for cinematography, but I just think that Killers of the Flower Moon has a certain like artistic aspect to it, and like the landscape shots and all, like all the coloring. I think it was just like so in tune, like with the movie, that it just makes it more of an experience and more immersive. So I feel like that's really why it like pops out for cinematography. I'm gonna break from y'all a little bit. I think this is either gonna be going to Oppenheimer or Four Things. Um, yeah. And yeah. I'm <laughs> has a lot of unique Actually. shots. However, I. I think I'm gonna lock in Oppenheimer getting it. Um, and honestly, out of these, I, I love Killers of the Flower Moon, but I think Oppenheimer would be my pick yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's cinematography's more grand. It's using the format of IMAX to cap, uh, to instead of like taking these like grand action sequences or something, it's focusing on conversations and stakes. Uh, yeah. It really kind of grounds the movie, but also it makes it feel ethereal at the same time when combined with the excellent editing uh, that's uh, behind it. How about best directing? I think we kind of got into it with cinematography, but just uh, Christopher Nolan. Mm -hmm. uh, in my mind, this is pretty open and shut. Christopher yeah. Nolan. It has to be Oppenheimer. Like it was just as a film, technical wise, skill wise, like it was just the best, like well rounded. And to be able to direct something like that, and like be able to have that vision from the beginning, since he had been working on it um, for so long, like. Like, you have to have a certain level of, like, precision with that. For this, I think all of the nominees are good. Mm -hmm. um, all of them did amazing. And obviously, there's been a lot of talk of uh, Greta Gerwig getting snubbed. Uh, I think that is true to an extent, but I think the greater snub of a female director from uh, the movies from this past year is uh, Celine Song for Past Lives. Um, fantastically directed movie. I thought she was going to end up getting in, but Justine Trier got in for Anatomy of a Fall instead, which was also a very pleasant surprise. Mm. Let's do best costume design. This is one of the ones that I actually like, I debate about a lot because I feel like four things had to be really like inventive with their costume design because they were inventing like something yeah. new. Like all, everything had to be like fit for that like aesthetic. But Barbie, they had to be able to like fit, like every single person had to be completely dressed up and completely accessorized so that they would like fit in the world that they were presenting. But also, Killers of the Flower Moon, they had to get all the costuming just right because otherwise it takes you like out of that world and it makes it just seem less realistic. Well, I do think the inventive work done in poor things is more impressive than recreating uh, work that's already been done for you know a line of of dolls. The costuming in Barbie is still stunning. I'm definitely leaning towards Barbie. I think with all of the nominations, except for kind of poor things, was Killers of Flower Moon, Napoleon, and Alzheimer. They're very set costumes, mm -hmm. like for a certain time period. But with poor things, it kind of has that as well. But it's very I could use inventive mm -hmm. with some of its costumes. And then Barbie, it just had to take the Barbie dresses and make them actually in real life. I think it's the most colorful and more standout costume. You know? mm -hmm. What about film editing? I was thinking either Killers, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. I think either of those three can get it. I think Oppenheimer, of course, it's, it's been winning a lot of awards, so I think that has a good chance. I prefer the editing in Killers of the Flower Moon over all of these, I think. The fact that the movie is as long as it is and does not feel that way, yeah. I think is a, a testament to Thelma Schumacher's editing skills. One of the best in the game, for sure. However, I don't think it's gonna end up winning. I think it's going to be Oppenheimer. Let's move on to international feature film. What do we think is winning out of these? I've only seen one of them on the list. Only was, seen one of them? that was Zone of Interest. Uh-huh, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. It I, is nominated for Best Picture. It is, it's good, it's good. I think I am just gonna lock in Zone of Interest simply because it is nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. I'm gonna say Zone of Interest. I've seen Societies of Snow and Zone of Interest and those are the only two that I can really speak on. But the sound work for Zone of Interest, which I will speak on later, yes. is amazing. 
and the way that they were able to just portray it was just so impressive. They kept the humanity while still making it extremely disturbing. Um, so I just personally love Zone of Interest, so that's the one I'm going for. Awesome. How about best original score? I feel like Oppenheimer, like, if, like so much of the film itself is the score and the way it builds and works into the story. And then even like those moments of like subtle silence are like really nice. But I really enjoy like the subtlety of like the background noises of Killers of the Flower Moon. Like it doesn't overtake the story, but it just kind of keeps it consistent throughout the entire film that you're in this world and you're in this different time. Yeah, Ludwig Gordonson's score in Oppenheimer, I think is a massive a achievement. Mm -hmm. It's the only one of these that I've really been listening to like yeah. outside of watching the film. You, like, I am, class with it? Yeah, and I I think I, I actually I haven't walked to class with it. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I might do that. But um I yeah, I'm going to go with Oppenheimer here. It's just I think the score it's very good with building up, you know. The whole I feel like the whole movie it was building up. And the score just kind of just building up every scene. Mm -hmm. it, I think it just like, in, it helped. It, you know, the score helped the movie. It pairs with the editing extremely yeah. well, helping things uh, flow, expe especially with like the non-linear structure mm -hmm. of it. Just quick little shout out to Poor Things score, just because I really like the way, like the tuning sound that like is just consistent throughout it. It was just really satisfying to my ear, and it just fit perfectly in like the, <laughs> the kind of weird world. I was like, yeah, that's what that yeah. sounds like. Yeah, yeah. It was quirky. You know? yeah, <laughs> quirky. It was quirky. It was quirky. A little different. It's a little funky, <laughs> but it's okay. All right. Uh, how about best sound? You mentioned this category earlier. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Okay, so Oppenheimer is obviously a favorite, and I, I, I know it's beautiful, but I have a personal attachment to the zone of interest just because watching it for the first time, I didn't know exactly what to expect going in, and I hadn't really read anything about it. And so for the entire film to kind of have this just like eerie tone of like the sound of like disturbing noises in the background just constantly reminding you of like where you are, like that was such an experience for me as like a watcher, and it kind of changed like the way I saw things. It's like an entirely new way to view it. And I think for the sound to be that important to the actual plot is what makes it like a best sound, like award winner, like deservedly. I think. Oppenheimer was kind of a front runner for this race for a long time, but I think this is one that they aren't going to end up getting. I am also going with the zone of interest. I, I'm not sure if Maestro should be on here. I'm a bit of a Maestro hater. If <laughs> you, you can't tell, it's I Oscar thought. Bait. Well, yeah, I thought I thought it was like it was fine, but it's definitely it's like a music biopic that they always seem to go for. I was an Elvis hater last year. Uh, this year, I'm a Maestro hater. I think it's definitely the worst of the Best Picture nominees, which we will get to. Oppenheimer is out of in, a sound of interest. Sound of interest. Zone of interest. My bad. <laughs> but uh, I think they both. They both have it for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Oppenheimer, the sound is very loud in your face. Like the scene where they're dropping the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. It's just the sound in the theater was just crazy. Mm -hmm. you know? It was able to use that. But with Zone of Interest, it's more background sound, I'd say. Mm -hmm. That's what's the best part of it. In order to fully hear the characters, you have to drown out what's going on in the background. Mm -hmm. And that, it's like a whole thing with the movie. So even though Oppenheimer is probably a front runner for the pick, I think Zone of Interest. Mm -hmm. It's just, they use the sound really well, especially with how the movie is. I think it just incorporates it. So. All, right. All right, so we only have three categories remaining. Adapted screenplay, original screenplay, and best picture. Uh, which would you guys like to start off with, adapted uh, or original? Let's do adapted. Adapted? Let's adapted adapt. screenplay. Okay, Ethan, what are your thoughts? <sighs> I know we've been saying a lot about Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, but uh, I think, because it's, it's based off a, a book called Prometheus, and Prometheus was mm -hmm. probably even before the movie came out. Yes. So I think it, it just makes sense for the Oppenheimer, and like how it was written as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's between Oppenheimer and American fiction. The Oppenheimer screenplay is interesting. It's written in first person. Um, Christopher Nolan's a yeah, weirdo, we man. <laughs> yeah, how does he do it? And uh, yeah, that, uh, the book you mentioned, Prometheus, it did, or well, American Prometheus, it did uh, exist before uh, like the movie was written and everything. It was actually gifted to Christopher yeah. Nolan yeah. on the uh, set of Tenet by Robert Pattinson. Yeah. And that's how the movie ended up getting made. And if you didn't know that, now you know that. Yes, um, the best things can come from the worst things. <laughs> but I don't think Oppenheimer is gonna win this actually. I think really? this is going to American fiction. Looking at uh, other awards, American fiction has been winning adapted screenplay more and more. Uh, so I think that trend is going to carry into the Oscars. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, now you have me rooting for American Fiction because American Fiction was like my like second runner-up like option. Mm -hmm. But now you you know what you have a point. I'm gonna put my vote down for American Fiction because Jeffrey Wright did like a wonderful performance and that story like he told the line between like comedic and super serious the entire time and it was wonderful. So I'm gonna put my vote down for that one. I'm rooting for you, Jeffrey Wright. Original screenplay. Where do we think this is going? I am a past lives defender. Mm. I love past lives. It was beautiful. Celine deserves the world. I'm rooting for it 110% past lives deserves it. Mm -hmm. I concur. <laughs> you concur? I concur. Interesting, interesting. I... Mr. Unique over here. This is I think different. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually, I, I think different something else. I, well, I know. I think it is, uh, past lives is a contender for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm kind of rooting for May December also. Oh, it, it May December okay. is yeah. the yeah. only yeah. nomination Charles that Melton. movie ended up getting. But yes, Charles Melton was Charles robbed Melton. for supporting yeah. actor. Yeah. We didn't we didn't mention that. Uh, but I I don't know. I'm between I don't think May December is gonna actually end up winning. Yeah. Mm. I don't think Maestro should win, so I'm not no. gonna put that out of principle. The holdovers is amazing, I but I Unfortunately, I don't think it's won enough in other places mm -hmm. to end up getting the awards. I'm between Past Lives and Anatomy of a Fall right now. Anatomy of a Fall. Yeah, because uh, Past Lives, it's it's kind of it's kind of a similar story mm -hmm. of between Oppenheimer and American Fiction. Past Lives was the front runner for a while for original screenplay, but Anatomy of a Fall has started to win those awards, and I feel like that also might carry over for this category. So I'm going to lock in Anatomy of a Fall. Last, certainly not least, <laughs> biggest award of the night. Who do we think is taking home best picture? Haley. Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. it's gonna be uh, Oppenheimer. Yeah, I mean, I can't help but agree. It's pretty blatant now. It kind of like everything everywhere last year. Yeah, I think Oppenheimer is gonna be sweeping in a lot of places and that's going to you know, lead I think, to it getting the award. You know, I think, you know, uh, I think what was it, 2016, 2017, mm -hmm. where they had La La Land win? <laughs> and then they're gonna come up stage, like, oh, guys, 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 I read it wrong. Maestro, you won! Maestro, <laughs> <laughs> stage! Maestro? <laughs> God, no, uh, if Meister wins, if that'll be the funniest thing worst, ever. Worst timeline. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Oppenheimer. The thing is, I don't see a clear second place, and I think that's a sign that Oppenheimer yeah. is just gonna yeah. end up taking yeah. it, and we it shouldn't just, be overthinking it's things. Just, it's one of those movies, just, it's not, it's just iconic, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like it was able to get, you could attribute to it for being like the Barbieheimer thing, but Oppenheimer just makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. It was the best picture, I'd say. Yeah, it's also like, it, it did surprisingly well. Like it was a full blockbuster uh, in the summer, and it ended up getting a, earning a billion dollars, which mm -hmm. is is crazy for a three hour like biopic uh, to do. So yeah, I think it's it is a huge achievement. It's probably my favorite Christopher Nolan movie, and it's my favorite movie that came out this year. So it, it's my pick, and it's also what I'm gonna be putting down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I feel like Oppenheimer is one of those films that just deserves it. Like, it's obviously just the award winner, and I can be like, oh, it's gonna be Oppenheimer. But that's because, like, obviously it's going to be Oppenheimer. It's nominated in every single category. It's a technical masterpiece. It's inventive. It's creative. And not just that, but, like, everyone kind of is, like, in awe of it and what he's done. So, yeah, obviously, it's, it's a great thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So those are our Oscars opinions. Make sure to comment your predictions down below. Thank you all for watching another episode of Cooks Cinema Reviews. I'm Kyle. I'm Haley. I'm Ethan. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Cool.